One of the things that I enjoy the most about my latest cinematic course is the student exercises. Already some truly excellent results are starting to pour in and I couldn't be happier to see them. In the course I love to give feedback to every single one and that actually gives me a unique opportunity. I can observe and gather the most frequent errors or flaws that students make when creating their cinematic shots. In today's video I've collected 8 of the most common ones, focusing on one of the most important areas for every CG filmmaker, the camera work. This video is part of my master cinematic storytelling in Blender, where I've collected everything that I've learned at film school into one course that teaches cinematography from the ground up, translated into the language of 3D. Contrasts and colors, lighting, camera work and sequencing of shots Basically everything I use every day in my professional and personal work, it's all there. So if you're serious about 3D filmmaking and directing, this course is made for you. So you have your wonderful cinematic shot, for example this arc shot. Your camera moves around the character, parented to this rotating empty and revealing this landscape on the other side of the scene. And then it just stops. That's such a pity, it instantly kills the believability of the camera move. You always want to think about a real camera and how fast it would move to stop. Usually it's not that abrupt, the camera has weight and there's some movement inertia, so it's very unnatural to hold the movement at once. These rapid stops and starts to animation frequently appear in early student results, especially before they learn about Bezier curves in the graph editor. And yes, those are the answer. You just switch your keyframe handle to this Bezier type and now we can see how it slows down gradually, visually indicated by this Bezier curve here. Scale it with S and lock the scaling in the x-axis to scale it only horizontally, changing the size and shape of this curve. The more you scale it like this, the longer the camera move will take to slow down. This is called an ease out and you really want to add it to your camera movement techniques. The same thing by the way applies to starting your motion. Don't just start it abruptly, make the camera pick up speed over time. While we're on the topic of Bezier curves and ease-ins, it's also not advisable to use the ones Blender gives you by default. I already mentioned this in my previous video here on the CGBoost channel, but one of the cardinal sins of camera animation, at least in my book, is to slap a default ease out, ease in animation on a camera and call it done. It feels so artificial, so computer generated and perfect, ah, it just doesn't work. You'll do much better to play with the curve, scaling it at least a bit, maybe adding a few more keyframes in between, breaking up the uniformity. At the very least, you can use the very convenient Shakeify add-on from the extensions to add this nice camera shake. So now the camera move starts off slowly, speeds up and then slowly stops while constantly having this camera shake on. Much more randomized. Especially for these sorts of large scale shots, it feels weird showing the camera speeding up. When you think about it, the camera operator would probably be on an already moving plane or helicopter and we would cut into the shot with the movement already happening. So that's why it's best to scale all these keyframe Bezier curves at the beginning of the animation all the way to zero. That way there is no ease out. That's what I did in majority of my Master 3D Environment course shots and nowhere do you see the shots actually speeding up from static position. Back to our arc shot, often what I see is a focus only on the actual camera move and once it's done, the shot ends. That's not however why we do the camera move. We do these sorts of shots to reveal something new happening, some new part of the story. That's why we need to give the audience at least a few moments to absorb it after we're done with the move. Don't end the shot too soon, give the audience time to enjoy the view. What I also often encountered, especially with these big aerial moves and sweeping landscape shots, is that the camera flies a bit too fast. Once again, it's better to stick to reality. How fast would a camera operator, let's say on board a helicopter, fly with the camera to capture such a shot? Surely not this fast. 
Of course, nowadays camera drones can move pretty fast, but unless you specifically want to achieve a feeling of a drone shot, I would say take your time, slow it down and immediately you'll make your big camera moves more real and more epic. Connected to this, don't make your camera shake disproportionately faster than your camera move. If your camera moves at walking speed, having the shake simulate a wild run is definitely not ideal. So always try to match the energy of the move and the shake. There is something wrong here. Even though the filmmaker knows that the character is going to stand up into this precise position, it feels very weird that the camera goes there ahead of the character. It's like the filmmaker is clairvoyant. Here's a simple camera movement rule for you. Never let your camera get ahead of your character's action. Always follow their movement, trying to add a bit of a lag, as if you're constantly trying to catch up. For example, here in this short action scene, I do not move my camera immediately with the character's movements. I lag behind a little, and when the camera follows the movement, the arm is actually already somewhere else, with the camera struggling to catch up. The directors of photography usually want to evoke a feeling like they're watching the shot for the first time along with the audience. In my full Master Cinematic Storytelling course, I dive deeper into all sorts of camera move types and how to direct them in your 3D scenes. I'll teach you my workflows for camera movements, from aerial flybys to documentary style. And that's just one part of the course. In the rest, I teach basically everything a beginner 3D filmmaker needs to start making short films in Blender. In this scene, I combined two camera moves. A crane shot, going down towards the street and right after it a dolly move but this this is where the problem lies the disconnection between move 1 and move 2 is too obvious one camera movement ends there's nothing happening and the other one starts instead we usually want to blend the moves together at least a little bit my tip for these scenarios where you have more camera moves connected together is put each one on a separate empty object to which you parent your camera. In this case, I have my crane empty, which is moving down, and then I have the dolly empty, parents it to the crane empty, and this one starts moving the camera after the dolly empty does its job. Having set up the two camera moves in this separated way, there's nothing easier than just taking the dolly move keyframes and overlapping them a little bit over the crane move. And after applying rule 2 from this video, playing with the bezier curves and even animating some slight camera shake, the blending of the two camera moves immediately becomes much more natural and smooth. A single shot is one thing. When you start putting more shots together, however, a whole new difficulty level gets unlocked. In those moments, you also have to think about how the shots flow together. And one of the most common mistakes in this area is not retaining the energy of your camera moves between the shots. Let's have a look at this example. We're getting closer to our subject. We cut to the second shot, which is even faster. And then we cut to a static shot. I don't know about you, but in my case, I feel like I've almost thrown up, having stopped so fast. Instead, you want to think about the sequence as a whole. I know that eventually I want to have a static shot of this character and his horse rearing. And so I want to gradually slow down my camera move throughout the sequence to make the transition less abrupt. When making shot sequences, always try to factor in the camera move from the previous shot and plan for the next one, making sure that they all flow nicely together. So these were the most common mistakes I was able to gather after going through the wonderful course results from our students. I don't know about you, but I enjoy talking about this topic so much. Dicing up cinematic art, getting into the weeds of 3D filmmaking and incorporating fundamentals and cinematic art into Blender workflows. So if you want to practice this topic with me, jump into my latest course. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.